preservative. Is there mercury in that blue shot? <laughs> there is an extremely small amount, not anything that's dangerous. And it is preservative free. Why do they put that in there? I don't understand the preserve the um, the, the bile like these the preservative free are drawn up mm -hmm. individually, so it's more expensive. The bile they can do one bile, so you can buy it at a cheaper price. The amount of preservative is less than a can of tuna, so oh. if you look at it that way, it's really not yeah significant. So you as know? long as you're not getting a bunch of shots yeah, at one time. Okay. Yeah. Studies show that most pregnant women should avoid eating canned tuna though, so this really wasn't sitting easy with me. So I wanted to see what she would say if I introduced pregnancy into the equation. Would she warn me of potential dangers? Okay. I'm not pregnant at all, but I'm like trying to be. Is that a they issue, recommend or? that the pregnant women get the flu shot. They actually had one death of a pregnant woman last week, and she hadn't had the shot. Yeah, but here I was reading that it's highly recommended for oh, them to get oh, it, yeah. so. Yeah, every OB them to get it. Okay. Because I mean, if they come down with the foot, like, they can hardly treat them, you know, oh. like, and so. So uh, this shot with the... Mm -hmm. So they're extremely propelling right now in Texas for pregnant women to get the shot right now. Wow, even the one with mercury in it? Mm-hmm. Both places administer flu zone, which contains three influenza strains recommended for this flu season, including the 2009 H1N1. Surprisingly, flu zone's own patient information sheet says that animal studies haven't been conducted with flu zone. In fact, it says it is not known whether flu zone can cause fetal harm when given to a pregnant woman or if it can affect reproduction capacity. So an untested flu vaccine is being recommended for pregnant women and those who are trying to get pregnant. Flu zone should be given to a pregnant woman only if clearly needed. According to the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, reports of fetal demise during the 2009 H1N1 season increased by 4,250%. And a study published in 2012 exposes an insane failed experiment on pregnant women during the 2009 flu season. Dr. Gary Goldman's study, published in the Human and Environmental Toxicology Journal, points out an astounding fact that no one saw until the publishing of the Goldman study. The CDC had recommended the double dosing of the pregnant population with the seasonal flu vaccine with mercury and the untested H1N1 vaccine with mercury. He highlights the fact that the safety and effectiveness of the AH1N1 had never been established in pregnant women and that the combination of two different influenza vaccines had never been tested on pregnant women at all. And if you ask for the vaccination package insert like we recommend, you'll find that the warning is still there. It hasn't been tested on fetal development or reproduction. The only one that pregnant women can't get is the live virus one that is the mist into the nose. Oh. Yeah, the pregnant women have to avoid all live viruses, but the inactivated ones, which most of them do contain mercury, are safe. And while the increase in vaccinations is wiping out some viruses, new superbugs are popping up to replace them. You know, you can't fool Mother Nature, and as you start to eliminate certain bacteria by the vaccines, other bacteria and viruses fill in the gap. Okay, so what do you have to say about this? Thing where it says like if I get the flu shot it can increase my chance of getting a different kind of flu. For example, they have now shown and discovered in research articles that the pertussis vaccine, which has been eliminating the pertussis bacteria, um, and we've been seeing the increased rates of, of, of pertussis going up. They've been trying to figure out why that is. Well, there was an article that came out a couple of weeks ago that said that because the pertussis vaccine eliminates the Bordetella pertussis bacteria, it has created a gap in which another bacteria called Bordetella parapertussis is filling in the gap. And now that they're finding that that bacteria may have, that Bordetella paraparatussis may have increased more than 40 times in these children that have had a pertussis vaccine. So now they are developing whooping cough or symptoms that look like whooping cough, but maybe not quite as severe as whooping cough. And they're finding that it's being caused by this new bacteria called paraparatussis. And I think that's happening with all of the Prevnar vaccines for strep. It certainly happened for Hib 
that as we eliminated Haemophilus influenza B, there are more strains of that bacteria falling in the gap that are more stronger and more virulent. So why on earth are they pushing these untested vaccines that are at best 70% effective against some viruses and at worst are creating new superbugs? When I started into this back in September of 2000, the vaccine industry was about a $10 billion of your industry. Now it's in the 30 to 60 billion. Some of the vaccines are making five to 10 billion on their own. The point is all vaccines come with risks. So unless you wanna be a paying beta tester for Big Pharma's failed experiments, research the dangers for yourself, decide if it's right for you because even well-meaning healthcare practitioners might not have all the facts.